who is there for her. And her friend offers advice and wisdom. And part of that wisdom is the following. Ellie, if you can change how you are talking and acting right now with Holly and think about that whether if you can make that change, just maybe those changes can affect the behavior and language of Holly. And that's what happens in the second half of the book. I'll give one example there where children are late for class. At least Ellie is and Holly are. Ellie gets to her seat quickly. Holly is racing. She comes to the front of the classroom. And now Ellie can show off. And she comes up with the first positive thing that she says to Holly. And she says, because she had looked out and saw where the teacher was, the teacher was speaking with the principal, she tells Holly, hurry up. Mrs. B isn't in class yet. Mrs. Holly, B is the teacher. Yes, Mrs. B Bear. Mm -hmm. And Holly uh, races in quickly. And she turns to Ellie and says, thanks for the quick save. So that is the first time in the entire story where something positive has come, in, right. come out of right. and Ellie. And, the, and, and just one yeah. thing, and Holly responds positively right. with appreciation. Right, and the other thing that was good was that when they were in the lunchroom, uh, she invited uh, the, the, the elephant that was um, Ellie the elephant, who was um, picked on or bullied by uh, Holly, uh, she invited her to sit down and share her lunch. And I think that was interesting because sometimes a child feels alone. They're new to the school. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to show appropriate behavior. And they just need somebody that's kind and welcoming. And that's how you, I, how the book was. That shows you could turn around a bad situation into a good situation. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really, really clever on how to do it. And that really, she included her in lunch. She included her in playing, uh, I believe, basketball or something with exactly. the other children mm -hmm. and so once she felt included she became part of the group and maybe that sometimes uh, you have to turn the bully around because it's all if about you're allowed to okay. it's got, got to be done cleverly and Ellie Elephant uses her smarts starting from the first situation where she realizes, I can make a difference. I'm going to let her know that Mrs. B. Bear isn't here, so hurry up so she won't get into trouble. Uh, what are some of the uh, warning signs of someone who has been bullied? I think we need, I want to get back to that because I think that's important. Um, you know, who are the victims? You know, first of all, why do, uh, why do people become bullies and who are the victims that bullies choose? I think that's kind of important here too. Who are the, pe the people who become bullies. bullies? I really talked about that before when I was saying, when I was saying that can happen when so many things are missing from the family. Mm -hmm. Another element which I didn't have a chance to mention. Okay. When you combine everything that's going on in the family, that brings negative elements. And then you add to that all the ugly things that are going out in all the media, from the traditional media of books and newspapers and magazines, and then with television and radio, and then with film and with videos. And then you add the internet, and you're adding the cell phone and all the other electronic devices. You see, and the, it's overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, it know. can be so devastating it, for people. And even in our political environment now, hearing everyone talking, it, it's the worst. Uh, and everyone from the Democrats yelling at the Republicans, the Republicans yelling at the Democrats, and, and name calling. I mean, uh, I mean, I think that bullying is com it's all around us continuously. Absolutely. It's really been a very, very a difficult thing. Are there warning signs that uh, that you can give it? You know that. Uh, 
for advice for parents to help them prepare for possibilities for children um, dealing with bullies is there anything that parents can do to help you know with bullying I uh, you okay, know there, you've, you've talked about two different things here. okay if you want some general advice first for yeah. parents why don't you do that of, that would be good prepping them that yeah, would be good prepping them before bullying hits them in the family or hits them in the face okay one important thing that parents need to do and that is ideally even before they have children to set up rules for what is appropriate and inappropriate behavior and communicating with each other now it's really important that parents are of one mindset if there's inconsistency, right. then you're looking for problems. Right. So, okay. Now, second thing I would suggest is parents getting involved with some workshops. And I will suggest three good foundational workshops. One would be dealing with the building of self-esteem, of positive confidence. A second one would be conflict resolution mediation important skills involved in the whole communication process and the third one a good solid session on understanding and the use of anti-bullying strategies well Lena, Dr. Anna, well, let me ask you this question what if it, you know we're dealing with the bully but what if your child is the bully that is something that needs to be thought of. You know, you're that's always thinking. Story. Yeah, you're always thinking of it's that child that's a bully. It's th that child that's a bully. But maybe it could become your child is the one that's bullying. Then what? All kinds of things. It really goes back to the one of the things I was talking about. This having setting up a standard for what is okay and what is not okay, so that the parents are in the right kind of situation, so when this kind of situation comes up, they're prepared. Mm -hmm. So it starts with rules that, can, that are going to work with your child. You tell them inappropriate, they listen. So now, the situation becomes that um, it's time to start discussing with the child a variety of different issues. For the first thing they have to realize is no one has the right to harm you with words or actions. And if they are going to do that, there are things that you can say and do. Now, in this child-parent discussion, let's focus from the parent's okay. vantage point a little bit, basic questions that the parent should be asking the child. For example, when the bullying situation happened, were you aware of why you were acting that way? Or, for example, was it a kind of a, a random event that happened? You thought, hmm, I'm wondering what it's like if I were to try to take control here and show power. So I'm going to bully Shelly. And I'm going to see how she responds, and I'll see what she does. And if she's responding nothing, then I might continue it. But if I see that maybe she's hurting, then maybe I'll decide, maybe I just won't do it again. There are lots of different questions that can and should be asked to get to a point in the discussion where the child ideally needs to be ready to be able to take the one who is the bully. And they, the bully, it, let me just finish, needs to be able to say, I am responsible for wrong mm -hmm. actions and for wrong communication. And it was wrong for me to try to hurt the victim. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we're talking about under the most ideal yeah. of circumstances right. when the bully has had a chance to accept that mm -hmm. responsibility and apologize. 
this in a school situation should be taking place where there is a teacher or a counselor there and mm -hmm. one sec and at the same time the victim needs ideally to be able to say i forgive right. you and i think it's so important that teachers i think this type of book i think should be part of the curriculum because it, it, it's not just a book for just, I mean, it's a good book, but it's not a book that you, one just like, oh, I'm going to have a fun time reading this book. This should be in every school system, and it should be because it could teach children how, what to do about a bully, and if it's a bully, maybe what they're doing to other children not to get the, you know, the attention and what can be solved. And because a lot of times, you know, it's, it's ideal if a parents, like you said, could talk to them. But a lot of parents are too busy. They're working. They don't have the time. They don't do this. And they're thing. not good communicators. Exactly. They have to be ready yeah. because, I'll give you the perfect example. I started talking earlier about parents need to set up a, an appropriate system of rules based on what's right and what's not okay. And they need to look at themselves before they even start communicating with the boy or girl and decide, could I be possibly responsible for some of the bullying that my child is putting into action. Right. What did, we have two minutes left on the show. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, what can, um, what, what would be the role if you can do it in a couple of minutes? What is the role of the bystander? Uh, you know, when the bystander sees all this going on, is there a role that they can play in the situation? Yes. Different options. Either they can be too frightened and they leave. They don't even want to try accepting any responsibility for what might happen or the ideal the ideal role is for a bystander who has witnessed and heard everything ideally decides he or she wants to change what he or she is hearing and there are different things that can be done as a result of that so one is to go up directly right next to the bully and the victim and say something, for example, to the bully, um, stop talking that way to my friend. You might, the bystander might press gently on the shoulder of the friend and say, come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. We have things to do. That's one way it can be dealt with. But the time is not enough to really properly get into this. But another important thing that the bully, or rather the bystanders, should be doing is to help the victim, help to support the victim in getting help mm -hmm. and speak with the right people, which include in the school psychologists, counselors, social workers, a teacher, a principal, or if it's closer to home, a parent or other, uh, somebody trustworthy in well, the neighborhood. But Dr. Ashley, uh, this has been a really informative show. I want to invite you back. I mean, we're just kind of touching and I see our credits are going down. And I want to invite you back to maybe discuss further some of the things that we didn't get to. At least we, our viewers will have an idea of what being bullied is and why a bully does what they do. And this has been a, a really, this book on, uh, you know, Case 2, Big Bully, Holly Holler, which has a lot of examples with puppets and everything. May I which say I, something here? Um, yeah. This and is I not just, just, just a story. Yeah. It's a series of questions at the end yeah. followed by a poem yep. yeah. called... Um, yes. So I, I, this is like the, you have the poem in here. You have questions, and so. This